Hey everyone, Psychiatrist here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how I have my UI set up. I'm going to do a series of videos for some of the key elements of my UI. This one's going to focus on the add-on suite known as LUI. Uh, you can download that from Curse. It's called LUI space core. And what that does is provide you with a, a set of modules that really replaces a lot of the core aspects of the default Blizzard UI. And it's very, very customizable. And that's a majority of what you're seeing. That's the kind of the clean, simple look uh, that I've got going here right now. And one of the things I wanted to go over is, first of all, advantages of why you might want to consider using this UI. And then I want to cover what are the changes that I've made from the default installation. So if you do go and download it and it doesn't look exactly like what you're seeing here, you can take into consideration some of the changes that I made uh, and maybe get a better understanding of maybe decisions that you would make differently uh, for your own setup. So first thing is let's take a look at some of the advantages of this UI. One of the things I like about this is it's highly uh, customizable in terms of what you want to show on the screen at any given time. It's very easy to hide a lot of the things that you're seeing. For example, one of the things that I love is over on the right hand side we have a movable bar that we can slide in and out and this is great for things like professions, uh, things like macros, um, mounts, things that you're just not going to use as often. For example, when you're raiding or doing a dungeon, you know, when you're really trying to focus, it just allows you to, to clear away a little bit of clutter. So things for me like professions, uh, rune forging, my death gate to uh, head up to Evan Hold, things that I'm not going to be using all that often. I've also, it's just got a couple of macros in here, and I can hide those when I'm raiding or I am just don't need to be using them but I can always pop those out if I want to disenchant something, craft a gem, whatever the case may be. So that's going to be a common theme throughout this UI is really that flexibility to choose what's shown on the screen. So if I start heading up and around here, you can see my mini map shown right here. I've got a button to hide that as well. So this little button right here shows and hides my mini map. Uh, up here at the very top right, I've got all of your character panel button, your encounter journal, uh, your store, your bags, all those things that are normally down on the bottom right in the Blizzard UI. And what I can do is actually hide that as well. So I pop that up if I want to. The next button over actually brings up a lot of the uh, raid and, and party controls, uh, the ability to drop markers, marker target, uh, a lot of the, the, the raid leader settings, the party leader settings. And what I'll do to demonstrate this is it's actually uh, leads into a very other great and other really good feature, which is um, if I mouse over where it says friends here, or if I mouse over where it says guild, I get a list without having to open up my friends window. I just mouse over this, see who's online. And if I want to invite someone to a party, all I have to do is alt click them. So I'm going to press the alt key on my keyboard, click on this person's name, and they're going to accept my invite because they've uh, agreed to be in the video here. And now they've joined my party, and now I can demonstrate dropping a couple of markers. And uh, this was invaluable back on Malkarok if you uh, ever had to do marking duty. Really easy to just drag these out, clear the marks, start dropping marks again. Okay, so makes it really, really simple to do some of those things. Uh, love being able to just invite people when I'm trying to build a party uh, from Guild. I can just mouse over everybody. And, and that, that also holds for anybody that's... Uh, talking in your guild chat, or sorry, talking in, in any of the chat windows, you can alt click on any name that you see and you'll be able to invite them to a party. So really makes it easy to, to do things like that. Uh, moving along the rest of the top here, of course you have a DPS number, uh, but I do have full blown recount going over here in the bottom left. And you know what, that's hideable as well. These little tabs and this little globe up here, this uh, allows me to show or hide things like recount. And then this other window that's red right here is omen. So that's my threat meter. And so if I just click this ball in the middle here, it actually will hide those for me. So if I ever want to, again, just clear up the screen, you know, I don't want to be seeing all this stuff. I can start to minimize uh, or, or not choose to show some of these elements. Keeping it going along the top, how much memory am I using with all these add-ons? What's my latency? Again, I don't have to mouse over that little computer in the bottom right that you get with the default UI. So I just see that up there, my home and world latency. Frames per second, I don't have to hit control R to pop up the overlay down here in the middle of the screen. Probably be hidden by my extra action buttons. Uh, see my armor percent right here if I need to repair and which items are lowest. Bags, obviously you can click on that to open up my bags. 
And then I got my currency up here, uh, up in the top left, I have my gold, and that's summarized across all characters, and I can see it on, on individual characters as well. Uh, I can flip that and show what this current character has, or show it across everybody. Buffs up here, uh, and then really kind of the, the main reason, the main advantages, I feel like, is just that simplicity, and it just packages all this up for you. Uh, and makes it so you don't have to download all these individual elements. So with all that being said, what we'll do now is switch over to a character that I haven't done any tweaks or changes on, uh, and we'll just show you what it looks like as you, if you were to download after this video and go to a fresh install of LUI. So if you have just gone and downloaded LUI, this is what you will see with the next time you start your game. Uh, this is a character I haven't really logged into, and I've actually got a bunch of add-ons running on him that I, I don't have going on my other character. Um, but the first thing you'll notice is I've got some messages from Tidy Plates. I'm running Tidy Plates Threat Plates, um, so I do want to enable that. That's fine. Uh, but the LUI aspect is this big install button. It's got to do a UI replacement and overwrite a couple of files. So what I'm going to do is accept that and just say install. And I got a couple of uh, other add-ons running here. Let me uh, disable some of the unnecessary stuff that I've not run on my other character real quick. That's a little bit cleaner. So now I'm just running pretty much the same add-ons that I'm running on the character you were just seeing a moment ago, but uh, LUI is in its default state right now. And uh, the key things that you'll notice uh, is that the player and target um, unit frames are much, much larger, a little bit higher up, a little bit more in your field of view, uh, and that the bars are laid out a little bit differently. Well, the first thing you want to do is make yourself familiar with this options button over here in the top right. So when I click on that, this is how you're going to change all of the configurations with it within uh, LUI. Uh, be aware that there is a profile section where you can make a profile. I could actually go ahead and just load the uh, profile that I was just running on the other character. So it's very, very simple uh, for me to copy from one character to another once I've got this set up. I don't have to manually make the same changes on every character. So you may want to start a new profile uh, once you start uh, tuning this so that you can then apply that to your other uh, tunes. Uh, but the first place I usually go is down here into modules, because again, it's a suite of add-ons, and you really may not need all of these. For example, I'm not a huge fan of the default bags that this comes with. I much prefer Arc Inventory. So I would go ahead and disable this, so that when I hit B, I get Arc Inventory bags instead of their bags that come with LUR. The next thing I'm not a big fan of is the swing timer. Uh, it provides when you're auto-attacking, you'll see a little swing timer going back and forth, so I'll disable that, for example. Uh, I would also disable, let's see if I can find uh, nameplates, so that I can use uh, the tidy nameplates, which I much prefer. Uh, the other thing is disable the vengeance one. because that provides a bar across the, the center here that, that shows, or sorry, not vengeance, I meant to say threat. Uh, remove the threat one, that still leaves omen on there. Uh, you'll still have an omen uh, meter that shows you know the entire group or, or raids threat levels, but this was an individual bar that kind of uh, comes across there. I also like to turn off the interrupt announcer, and let's see if there's anything else that I desperately like to get rid of. Those are usually the first things I'll remove. Okay, so once that is done, the next thing that you're going to want to consider doing is taking a look at the placement of these unit frames. And so what I like to do here is go ahead and click the click scroll down below the modules, right? We started here on modules. This is where the actual config options are for all of the individual modules. And so I'll go in here to unit frames, start by hitting move unit frames, and now I can start to configure these. So if these are a little too high for me, first I'm gonna deal with the positioning and I'm gonna move these down a bit. Move my focus here, move my player here, target here. I'm gonna stick my pet down over here. Have my pet's target. Actually, sorry, I gotta have room for Omen over there. 
So pet, pet targeted me down in the bottom left and right. Uh, I actually use, um, <clears throat> uh, what's the name of it? I use uh, quartz for cast bars. So I'm actually going to end up disabling the cast bars in here as well. So as I go back into the, the unit frames, that's the next thing I'm going to do is turn off those cast bars that you just saw when I hit move unit frames. And I do that by heading in here and clicking on player, going to cast bars and disabling them. Same thing on the target. I prefer the ones from quartz. So disable those as well. And this is where you can really get into tuning exactly how you want these unit frames to look, okay? I can start to say, hey, you know what? This is too big. I can just scale it down a little bit. Make these the same. And now you can see it's getting much closer to what we were just seeing a moment ago. Other thing you may want to do is uh, turn off the connectors and that's these little uh, these little lines that are kind of connecting these. I'm not a huge fan of those. Um, so I'll just go ahead and turn off some of those connectors. And if at any time you don't like some of these unit frames, you can change them however you want them to be. Uh, if you want to use the Blizzard boss frames instead of the boss frames that come with this, you know, the little boss health that pops up over here, absolutely can do that. Uh, same thing with, for example, when you're in a party. Uh, let me grab my... A friend again here show what it looks like in a party okay so here's the party window over here it's kind of popping up here so let me uh, head back up to unit frames again not a huge fan of that placement let me have party start right here or if I don't like that at all if I just want to go back to the the blizzard ones for the party stuff I can just head over here to party and just disable it use blizzard party frames and now if I move my little leveling add on there. Uh, he just shows up like you would normally uh, within a party, right, just with the default UI. Or if I disable that altogether, maybe I don't even want to see that because one of the things it comes with is grid down here in the bottom right. I have grid anyways, so I can always do a slash grid. A couple of lure errors, a couple other add-ons thrown in here. Um, did a slash grid because it comes with grid and if I want to start moving that around just turn off the frame lock and now I can click and drag and have grid kind of be over here on the, the right side and that's why this area on my, my UI is wide open is because in, a, in a, a raid you know when you've got 20 25 people maybe up to 30 people you want to have room for this to expand out uh, over here on the side uh, and then the next thing is we've done grid so I can move that around if I want to let's talk about recount and omen for a minute so I'm going to turn those on with a little bar it defaults to putting recount down here in the bottom right I'm not a huge fan of that and also it, it hides all of the config buttons but this is plain old recount underneath it so I'm going to do space or sorry slash recount config you couldn't see that probably under my my little uh, icon but I just typed in slash recount space config and what that allows me to do is say you know what I want these buttons to appear and I want to unlock the window, and I have mine sitting over here on my character. But, you know, hey, if you want to have yours down on the bottom right, hey, wherever you like, right? And then the other thing I really like to do is the colors. Hit reset color here because I want all of the, uh, all of the DPS meters and whatnot to indicate the color of that person's class. Don't hit reset colors here because that'll get rid of this red box and you know, you'll have the normal recount look. You'll have that big red title bar on it and all that stuff. Just reset colors on this middle setting here. Uh, and then you're pretty much good to go on recount at that point. You can uh, click and drag and expand it out, make it wider, make it narrower, whatever you want to do. And then once you've gotten to the point that I've shown here, really all that's left is to configure your bars. And it's just bartender underneath this. So at that point, I'm just going to go slash bartender. I'm going to uncheck the lock. Uh, it looks like it gives me bar one and bar two just down here. And then I've got some other bars just kind of floating all over the place. So make sure you like where you've got your extra action button. And then set up your bars however you personally like to have them. I like to have it, uh, I've got a, one of those gaming mice, uh, it's not a Naga, it's actually the Logitech uh, G600, but it's still got those uh, 12 buttons over on the thumb. So what I like to do is come over here and turn my padding down to 0, 12 buttons is good, but I like to have 4 rows. 
And so what you end up with is something like this, where, you know, I got some of these visible turn off always hide there. Point of that being, when you start putting things on it, this follows the natural layout that you have on your on your keypad or your thumbpad. So it's easier to remember that, you know, hey, this one right here is the top left button. This is the top right button. This is the middle button in the second row. This is the middle button in the third row, bottom left button, and so on. So as we head back over to my main character, which I'll do now, and here we're back on the main character, uh, and you can see it looks uh, pretty much exactly the same. If you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm going to continue doing these. Uh, I'll be covering uh, how to configure mixed rolling battle text as well as compact runes, which uh, some of the, the Death Knight specific uh, rune management and, and cooldowns, um, as well as kind of the damage scrolling within mixed rolling battle text uh, in a future video. So look forward to those and uh, please subscribe and like the video and leave me any comments if you have any more feedback. Thanks for watching.